In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to solve a ballistic pendulum problem. You would first start by using conservation of momentum and then follow that for the second part using the conservation of energy. And then in the end, we're going to solve for what height does the bullet and the block swing up to. So in order to do the first part of the problem, we are going to focus on momentum and collisions. So what we're seeing here is an inelastic collision where a bullet is gonna strike a block. It's going to um, combine masses with this block and they're both gonna swing up together to a certain final height. So based on the conservation of momentum, the total momentum before the collision, we'll call that PT and then right before, is equal to the total momentum after the collision and momentum, which is represented by a lowercase p, is just mass times velocity. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this 20 grams and we're going to divide it by a thousand so that we get 0 0.02 kilograms and we're ready to go because we have all of our initial values. We have the m and v for the bullet and we have the m and no V to start out with for the block. So we have all of our momentum before and we can figure out what happens afterwards. All right, so I took the momenta of each of the things before the collision, the bullet being 0.02 times the 300, so that's the momentum of the bullet. And we know this three kilogram block is at rest, so plus a momentum of zero. So in total, it comes out to six kilogram meters per second. And that equals, and what I did is I combined the mass of the bullet and the block, which turned out to be 3.02 times one final VF because they're traveling together. So now you can treat them like one large mass. So on the right side, I have M times V with my unknown V, which I called VF, divided both sides by the 3.02 and ended up with a velocity of 1.99 meters per second. So now that I finished that part of the problem, everything on the left side where they have the initial conditions of the bullet and then the bullet striking the block and then moving together afterwards, that kicks off the second part of the problem where you just focus on energy. So now from this point on, we have the object moving this way at 1.99 meters per second. And it's at its lowest point in the problem. So we know that it has quite a bit of kinetic energy because it has a velocity here. So if we're taking a look at the total amount of energy initially, assuming that there's no energy lost within the problem, that's gonna equal the total energy at the end. So at the very bottom at its lowest point, we can consider that no potential energy, but we have some kinetic energy. And then afterwards, as it rises up, and we could just call that KE or K, um, and as it rises up, it increases a little bit of height. And if it's reaching its maximum height, it only has potential energy because it would momentarily hit a velocity of zero. So basically whatever kinetic energy we have in the bottom gets all transferred into potential energy because we have our maximum amount of Ke at the bottom and then we have zero. Therefore it has to be transferred into another form. So we have our formula for Ke, which is one half mass times velocity squared, and that equals mgh mass times, I'll just put in the 9.8 right away, mgh, and then the h is that final value that we're looking for. 
Uh, turns out that the masses are just going to drop out anyways. So let me go ahead and plug in my values and solve for my height. So the calculation turned out to be uh, fairly simple once we got everything set up over here. Um, it's mostly the concept that you have to make sure you understand and then mathematically our masses drop out. I have one half times my V that I got from the first part of the problem. That's the part that makes it a little tricky. There's an initial and a final for the momentum portion. And then here's the initial and then the final for the energy portion. And then I just divided both sides by 9.8 and that, that gave me my height of 0.8. Two zero meters. So that solves for our final solution. If you were to be asked for a theta, which is the angle at which the pendulum swings up at, um, you could do that, but you would need the length of the actual string itself. So say, for example, this string came out to exactly one meter, then that would be like the hypotenuse of your triangle. And then what you do is cut it off here. And we know that the height that it rose up was 0 0.2. So if this is 0 0.20, then you take 1 minus 0 0.20. And this portion of your triangle then would be 0 0.8 meters. Okay. Once you have two parts of your triangle, it looks like we have the adjacent and the hypotenuse side. So what you would do is take the inverse cosine of the adjacent side, which is 0 0.8 divided by one. And then that would give you your theta if you needed to solve for that in addition to the height that the object swung up to. So I hope that was helpful in helping you solve a ballistic pendulum problem. Remember the focus is using momentum formulas and concepts initially, and then finishing off the second portion of it when it swings off with energy formulas and concepts. Thank you for watching and listening.